What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We are here in Short Hills uh, today at Taste Buddy with Angie Segura and Alexa Clark. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, this is like a really, I, I, I knew about this wall beforehand, but just like <laughs> seeing it in per- person is absolutely epic. So that's why this was like, I really need to get Taste Buddy on because I want this as part of my the show. Background. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Everyone seems to really love it. Angie worked very hard. She put up all the pineapples. (laughs) Every single pineapple. DIY project. Yeah. 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 No, I love it. And so let's talk about, let's just, for the listeners, if they don't know Mm -hmm. what Taste Buddy is, and you guys have been open for two months at this point, at the time of the recording, by the time it posts, maybe three or four months at that point. Um, So what is Taste Buddy? Taste Buddy. Okay. So it's a gluten-free bakery. That we also have juices, smoothies, bowls, coffee, tea. Our coffee is from Mod Cup in Jersey City. Okay. Which is delicious, delicious coffee. Amazing. But really the idea is kind of to have a balance between life. Like, because you know how people say like, oh, balance in food is really what the key is. So that's kind of like our our idea. Yeah. So we have like the sweets which are very popular, and then we kind of, you can come in the next day and get a bowl or a juice or smoothie, and you can kind of balance out your diet. Right. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really. So what, um, and I think we talked about this on the phone when we were doing like our intro call, but like how did you guys meet and then <laughs> eventually get yourself to this moment, you know, now sitting here on the Greetings from the Garden State podcast? Um, we both <laughs> met six years ago yeah um at a restaurant that we both worked in she was the head pastry chef and i was uh the head server there um it was in milburn which is less than two miles away Mm -hmm. from here and um we kept in touch ever since because we both moved in different directions right Mm -hmm. and uh i always told alexa when i met her i always had this feeling that we were going to end up working together again I just didn't know how and I always told her that I had this feeling that we are going to be together again and work on a bigger project than we were already doing right um so how did it start (laughs) (laughs) I was I was working at a restaurant and I really didn't like it I didn't like the place it it felt very draining and like I was like I don't know where to go with my life and Angie was kind of in the same boat in like a different idea but like we were both like what are we going to do and then one day we just got together and was like let's start something ourselves and then snowballed from there really yeah, right. yeah. originally it was just going to be a home project yeah. right. we we're going to start from home you know Very doing small. local deliveries and we were like why not take this risk mm-hmm. and go for it yeah we've both been in the industry for over 10 years uh we both are very knowledgeable both front and back alexa has a lot of knowledge in back of the house she's cooked all these years i have a lot of knowledge front of the house i've uh, served i've managed i've also uh, been in the kitchen before so it's it's one of those things where we're like it's now or never yeah Mm -hmm. and we just went for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. And so, like, as you guys, because I think you you met six years ago, but then you kind of, like, went to work at different places. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then eventually got reconnected somehow. Um, but, like, when you were, I guess, maybe rolling around ideas of what you could do, what, how come this was, like, the concept? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that a good question? Yeah, yeah it is it a is great a question. question. It's hard. It's a hard answer because... It, yeah, it kind of just really it was like one idea after the other. At first, it was just going to be completely health. Like yes, healthy. very. Yeah. It was just going to be meal preps and smoothies, juices, bowls. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're like, why not use Alexa's background? Yeah, because all I really knew it know is pastry. pastry. <laughs> right, right. She is a phenomenal pastry chef. Uh, yeah. she's she always has Thanks, been. Anne. Everything that she's <laughs> ever put in front of my plate. Uh, in front doesn't of my face, long. it doesn't last yeah, long. Right. It's yeah. and it's very original. And you know, we were like, you know what? We need to incorporate this into our plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how and the then pastries we, came into place. And then we were looking for spaces. We saw this space that was a bakery beforehand, and that's really what made us like go to that extreme. Yeah, because we were like, we really like this location and space. 
so let's do it. And we were like, went full force. <laughs> right. And so, like, what's been, you know, like, your experience, uh, I mentioned before, you've been open for two months, and what's been the experience like in these first two months? Has it been, I'm assuming, received well? You know, like, people enjoy it, people are coming in, all that yeah. kind of stuff? The community is extremely welcoming. I mean, the both of us are not from here, mm -hmm. um, and everyone has welcomed us with open arms. So yeah. yeah. It has been overwhelming in the best way possible. Right. And a lot of people coming back, which is the best sign to exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of Instagram moments, I'm sure, with the wall and the food and the whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, so talking about that too, you know, like you're in like this stretch, you know, uh, what's this, this road here? Uh, Milburn Avenue. Milburn Avenue in Short Hills. You got all these different businesses, all these different things. And, you know, like what's kind of the, you know, is there like a buzz downtown? Like are people, is it like a lot of people walking around, coming down, trying something, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So we're like, there's the center of Milburn down there, which right. is definitely more popping right. and more buzzing yeah and then people who live in short hills i think they really are learning that we're here and they don't have to go all the way all the way to milburn like it can be a little annoying yeah so right. you yeah. know it's people definitely are definitely like, congested more yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the center of town right so yeah i think i think people are getting to know that we're here and yeah. coming back and the high school's not too far yeah. from here it's less than two blocks away if you usually if you come around like fridays around three o'clock there's like a good amount of high teenagers kids <laughs> hanging out they're coming by for a bowl right exactly yeah. mm -hmm. and then so when when they're coming by like what are the things that like if you go to taste buddy you have to get fill in the blank what is what is mm. the thing I mean, it could be multiple things it could be all of it <laughs> no, I guess, but um, but are like there are things that you see that people are just like, yeah, like this is this is great, you know, like, I I got to get this all the time, or they come back for like one specific thing, or they try in a lot of things. It, every week it's it kind of changes. Yeah, I would say this week there was a a lot of people talking about the banana bread. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> uh, which is like people just like will come in and be like, I love this, I need this, and then maybe they'll branch out another time. Yeah. But yeah. And I would say our most popular bowl is either the Taste Buddy OG or the Born This Way. Right. Which people both love. Um, but uh, smoothies are very popular. Throughout the week, a lot of people come in and get a smoothie. Yeah. Um, Sometimes they do a little mix of smoothie and a pastry. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. A little balance. Life's yeah. all about balance. And but that's you know? how we are. We're all about balance. <laughs> and I'm, exactly. I'm like the worst salesman because people will come in and be like, what's your favorite? And I'm like, uh... <laughs> But that's like the every, worst question you exactly. can ask an owner. It's like, right. we have it there Yeah, well, reason. don't get the bowls because I hate the bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you going to go make, tell me to make a new juice? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, it's your decision. But a lot of people do like to be like, like guided. Kind of guided in a way as to what they, especially if it's their first time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that's also kind of interesting too because you have a lot of, creative control over oh there's somebody trying to get in but um <laughs> oh, we're closed <laughs> uh but uh all right si sidetracked but like a lot of creative control over what you're doing because you mentioned you were working at a restaurant before yeah. and you were unhappy so like what's what's it been like the transition from being you know like an employee at a restaurant or yeah. bakery or whatever to you know now being like we could do whatever we want you know, is it's that, a little is it, weird. Honestly, yeah. it's surreal, and yeah. I tell her this all the time. I can't believe that this store is ours. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes I feel like, okay, well, what is so and so going to think? And it's like, it's just us. We're the decision makers. Yeah. Here. There's not really anyone telling us you can't do this and you can't do that. It's we're free yeah. to do as we choose. And yeah. Right. I think sometimes it, we can definitely overthink things, be like, will people sure. actually buy this? Mm -hmm. If we put this on the menu, like, will it be too weird? for yeah. Like something so small, like we ordered a bunch of persimmons and we were like, wow, people don't know what persimmons are. I have no like, idea what a persimmon is. <laughs> <laughs> it's but delicious that was the fruit. the same reaction yeah. by 95% of the people right. that came in yeah. here had no yeah. idea what it no was. No idea. So we were like, okay, you know. Take it a little down, a little notches, and make it more like <laughs> yeah, right, easy. Exactly. Yeah. And then you know, does the I'm I'm assuming just because of like the seasons and all that, yeah, and definitely. You're like trying to yes. do stuff for the seasons, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, what what's been maybe like for Thanksgiving? Just because Thanksgiving just happened, uh, what was like some of the stuff that was 
that you guys I've, had for Thanksgiving? The normal. Normal. Like, you know, pumpkin pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. pie. Um, crumb cake sold a, a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Which well, I was, love crumb cake. <laughs> it was yeah. delicious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else? Cupcakes. Cupcake. We had like a yeah. Thanksgiving themed cupcakes. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't really done any like specials on the bowls or smoothies or anything yet. Right. Because we're just still trying to figure everything out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. eventually, maybe next year, we'll have like a fall bowl or something. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just interesting because you mentioned like a persimmon, which I still don't know what that is. We'll talk about that <laughs> off air. But, you know, like being the creativity side is like, you know, you push in the envelope so, so much. And like, you don't know if people are going to try it, yeah. but if you know it's good, you know, this, you know, Taste Buddy has good stuff, then you're going to, you know, most likely Maybe come in and try open. it yeah. or, you know, a- at least ask what a persimmon is, Yeah. you know? So I-, I think that that's very interesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all the baking stuff is gluten-free, which we're going to get into in our next segment. So we're going to take our first break. This was a great first <laughs> segment. Uh, so we're, this is the first break. Uh, this is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Cam. We're here at Taste Buddy in Short Hills with Angie Segura and Alexa Clark. We'll be right back. It is time for Today in New Jersey History. On January 31st, 1914, Hugh Joseph Adonisio was born in Newark, New Jersey. He was the 33rd mayor of Newark, serving from 1962 to 1970, and prior to that, he was a United States congressman for 13 years. After leaving office, he was prosecuted for taking kickbacks and convicted of corruption. The judge said he was literally delivering the city into the hands of organized crime. Adonisio would pass away on February 2nd, 1981, in Red Bank, New Jersey. And that is Today in New Jersey History. All right, we're back. This is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Kim. We're here at Taste Buddy in Short Hills with Angie Segura and Alexa Clark. So in the first segment, we kind of talked, learned about the background of the business, learned a little bit more about uh, your guys' backgrounds, um, learned about what's on the menu, what people get, what they like, what you're trying to do, the creativity side of it. And I tease it in the first segment that the baking stuff here, it's a gluten-free bakery, which, you know, maybe like five, ten years ago, maybe even less than that, if you said gluten-free bakery, people would be like, "Why? what is that? Don't you need that to I bake? I love gluten. I love gluten, right? <laughs> Who doesn't? But, like, so when you were putting this concept together, why gluten-free? I think that's what we were going to talk about in this segment. So what was the purpose behind the gluten-free side on the on the bakery? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a hard question, honestly. Um, so because of our background and what – we know from working in restaurants and people with allergies and things, we were like, yeah, let's do gluten-free. And I think it started because originally we were going to do bowls, which are gluten-free. Right. And then we were like, oh, let's just do it where there's no gluten at all in the place. Yeah. And that's really how it just started. And I've worked with gluten-free flours in the past, so it was like kind of easy. Yeah. Still a challenge, definitely, but... Which I was excited about. Right. A little challenge. Yeah. We wanted, yeah. we wanted challenge. something yeah. a little bit different than what we're already used to. Yeah. yeah. Because, <clears throat> I mean, who doesn't love a challenge? I think we always like to mm-hmm. um, see where we're at in terms of our knowledge and yeah. what we have learned the yeah. past 10 years. Yeah. Um, it's something, it was definitely more of a business decision for us because if you go to any bakery they're always going to ask for a gluten-free option a nut-free option a dairy-free option Mm -hmm. right um and a lot of places with there's cross-contamination which a lot of people who suffer from celiac or Crohn's or anything they really can't have like any like you know when you cook with all-purpose flour or wheat flours like it's literally in the air it's in the oven like so people who have really bad celiac really can't even eat anything from the place so it doesn't really matter if it's made with like a gluten-free flour or almond flour they're like no I, I can't eat it yeah so this is like we are totally very conscious of not bringing anything with gluten in like even like down to like the sprinkles we got right we were like oh my god we have to find gluten-free sprinkles <laughs> like something so stupid like yeah. you know even the really marshmallows like, right. we bought we're making cocoa bounce for the yeah. season and yeah. we're like wait marshmallows are gluten-free but some facilities make it in uh places that have gluten oh. yeah so, so it's, it's, it's crazy yeah. yeah so it's it it's 
I think a couple years ago it would have definitely been more of a challenge to find things, but nowadays it's a little easier right. to find them. Yeah. Because like, yeah. you guys aren't gluten-free yourselves. No, we're not. You just run a gluten-free bakery. Right. Um, so also what I think is interesting about that is, like, sourcing your products and your ingredients, like you were just talking about the marshmallows. Like, does that – obviously that has to factor into your decision. And then how, like, is that something that people are just, you know – offering up those that information like if you go buy your flour from somewhere are they like yeah we only do it this way like how does that how does that work yeah so you have to really like do a little bit of research a little bit yeah yeah and figure it out a lot of googling a lot of things like that and our flour is is cup for cup flour which is a known brand and it's made in 100 percent like gluten-free yeah I think nowadays if you're in a place that does have gluten and let's say the packaging says gluten free. I think they have to say if there's gluten in the house. Like, Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, legally, they have to say it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So I think it, it's a little more. It's a little more pricey too. Like everything. Like for let's say our flour is eighty dollars for twenty five pounds. If it was all purpose, it would be like twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, people are a little like. Why is it so expensive? expensive. <laughs> like we get we, we get we get it often. all we get yeah, it sometimes right. not yeah. a lot but sometimes yeah. yeah and you know we have to explain to them it's it's gluten free it it does cost us right. a lot more than yeah traditional you want you want to know something funny in that first segment when you were talking about uh, this just popped into my head yeah yeah in the first segment when you were talking about how you had experience working with different flowers. I was like, like those flowers. Oh, oh. I was like, yeah. what the hell is a gluten flower? I don't know, like, but then I was, and then the more you talked about it, I'm like, oh, flower, you idiot. It's a yeah, bakery. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's like, so this is just obviously because I'm so, like, I don't bake. My sister's a good baker. I don't like to bake. I'm like a more happy accidents guy in the mm-hmm. kitchen. Um, but uh, like, does that change like the... It changes the consistency a yeah, lot. Right. Yeah, right. So like, is there it? has been trial and error. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like how many different non-gluten flowers are there? Are there, is there a lot? You said almond flour before. Are there like a, yeah, like, that kind of, like soy milk, <laughs> almond milk, oat milk kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Like yes. There's, there's different options. Like you could go totally nut flours, which would also be like grain free, which some bakeries are grain free. Um, but our flour has rice it's a rice blend and starches and things. So, yeah, there's totally there is a lot of different options. Like we didn't we we made a cookie with banana flour, oh. which was interesting. That it was it, interesting. It tasted pretty good. I it have to like it, learn more about this. <laughs> like dive yeah. into it. Like how do you make banana flour? Like yeah, that's what like we were you, like. You powderize a banana. Yeah, literally. Basically. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Which is basically almonds. It's just almond flour. It's just ground almonds. Yeah. Like. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Blowing my mind again. But um, <laughs> so then, like, when people are – so would gluten-free be – I know even people – beyond people with celiacs or Crohn's and that kind of stuff, is it just generally, like, a healthier option than regular flour yeah, and that kind I of stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it's people, all depends. people debate, but it, yeah. it is technically. Like, if people you eat say, 10 gluten-free pumpkin pies, honestly, it's still yeah, going you know, yeah. to be good. Honestly, if you gut feeling, like – when you eat something sweet, you tend to feel like very full. Yeah. Yeah. Versus gluten free, you don't have that weird stomach. Yeah. You know, like gluten tends to bloat people. Right. That's what they say. Yeah. So. And so, like, I'm assuming that that you know could also be like a selling point too. You got smoothies yeah. and even yeah. your sweet stuff. Yeah. It's not as bad maybe as like... And our goal is to people not even to realize that anything is gluten-free. Um, we do have a lot of... Um, I had a lady come in the other day and she said her son uh, walks by here every day, you know, to school and back. And he just is very skeptical about coming inside the doors because it says gluten-free bakery on yeah. the front. And the thing is, I feel like a lot of people think that because it's gluten-free, it's going to be dry. It's not going to taste the same. Right. Um, And we're trying to change that misconception because, um, like I said, Alexa and I are not gluten-free. Right. And we try these things, and we're like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We say we love We say (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if we didn't love our stuff, like, you know, what's the point? Like we were saying before, like, what's your favorite thing? Or, like, what do you like? Or whatever. It's very, there's, there's. Everything's good. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Which I think is just, it's so cool. And, like, that's something that we obviously haven't done on this show, you know, mm-hmm. and, like, talked about something like that. And it's 
like specific, but also just kind of very like it, the creativity side of it really interests me as like a creative guy, at least in my yeah. own opinion. <laughs> like I think that that's really cool. Like mm -hmm. trying to figure out like if banana flour or almond flour is going to be good in this one thing that mm -hmm. I'm going to do, like the trial and error behind that. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, so kudos to the both of you. I think that's very <laughs> thanks, cool. Thanks, um, yeah. And then, so as you're continuing to try to like, you know, grow the business and all that kind of stuff. And then like we mentioned before, op open for two months by the time this posts, I think three months. Um, and so what are some things that maybe like over the first couple months have you been adjusting kind of like maybe the business goals or like from the business side of it is something where now you're trying to be like, okay, well, let's try to accomplish this by month three or after two months, we're going to be like there or whatever. Like what, how does that, how does that work? Mm. Someone else at the door. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're closed. We just made eye contact too. Oh weird. no! Yeah, <laughs> that's a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like the show is literally creating buzz. And we haven't even posted this episode yet. It's amazing. I mean, only two, so not that much. But you know, I'm sure yeah. you guys are doing it on your own. But I, yeah, let's talk about like like goals yeah. for the business. Like, that was a terrible way to ask that question. But goals for the business. Like, what are some things that maybe in the first few months of being open that you're trying to accomplish? Oh, well, number one, DoorDash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've been trying to get on DoorDash for like over two months. Since like we since started. we since we opened, we've been trying really? to get on DoorDash. Just trying to do like that extra step of promoting. Mostly for promotion. Promotion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we'd probably get off it eventually because right, they right. take way too much money. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Because people like you know. We think we've been open forever, but people are like, oh, I didn't even know you guys were here. Yeah. You know, and it, right. that's the hardest, that's honestly the hardest part, is to get people to know we're even here. A right. lot of people that live in town don't know we're here. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just, and we, we like promote a lot. Right. Facebook, yeah, we Instagram. think we're, we're promoting a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I love the Taste Buddy Instagram page, personally. Oh, oh that's you. all Angie. Yeah. She, <laughs> that thank you. <laughs> we work very hard. We come up with ideas. Our, the ba the baker that we work with, Olivia, she's always like, wow, our social media is through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about social media all day. Yeah, well, that's, like, how, you, that's how you get the word out. You yeah. Know? You gotta we find have it, fun right. creating it, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Creativity. Again, yeah, yeah. Just that's all where goes it back all comes creativity. in. Absolutely. I, honestly, it's kind of like a whirlwind, because our biggest goal was to open the place, which right. felt like it took forever. It took yeah. forever, um, you know, I mean, forever for some people, maybe a lot longer for us. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, we started the LLC in January. We opened our doors October. Wow. So it so was... It is quick. It but is quick, but for us, it felt like an eternity. I think it was because we were just so eager to get yeah. it going. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and then I'm just like, wow, people are coming in. Like, yeah, our goals are very minimal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Somebody just come just in like, the door. Yeah. yeah, people coming in the door to like your own places. Exactly. Like, Holy yeah. Crap. Yeah. Like, right. People are people like our stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's hard awesome. to believe. Yeah. yeah. And we love it. It's right. a yeah. great feeling. Yeah. yeah. That's that's awesome. <laughs> and yeah, I think eventually we'll have bigger goals. But <laughs> of course, yeah, right. It's all in good time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but speaking of the people, so we're gonna take our second break, our last break of this episode, because uh, we're gonna get into the community side of it here in our, our third segment. Uh, so this is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We're here at Taste Buddy in Short Hills with Angie Segura and Alexa Clark. We'll be right back. It is time for your New Jersey fun fact of the day. Did you know that New Jersey's state flower is the violet? And that is your New Jersey fun fact of the day. And we're back. This is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We're here at Taste Buddy in Short Hills with Angie Segura and Alexa Clark. Uh, so the first segment, we kind of talked about the background of the business. We talked about your guys' backgrounds starting this, what you guys sell, all that kind of stuff. The second segment, we asked why gluten-free, and we did a whole great segment on that, and I learned, you know, that we're talking about flour, not <laughs> flowers, um, but, uh, and then a little bit of the goals. But one of the things that you were talking about are, like, people coming in the door. So you're obviously a new business, you know, even when this posts, it's still going to be a very new business. So when you pick this space and all that kind of stuff, what was the reception from the community like right from the get-go? Pretty good. Yeah. Welcoming. Yeah. 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 Extremely welcoming. It was, it kind of took us aback. Yeah, uh, a little bit by surprise. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said before, Alexa and I aren't from here. I mean, I live about 20 minutes from here. Okay. Alexa lives in Piscataway, so. A little further. A little, a little further. further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew no one in this community. And yeah. 
everyone has been extremely welcoming here and so many people do promotions for us that we didn't even you know know about yeah yeah people will will reach out and be like do you know that there's this gluten-free facebook local group and we're like no and we then don't. they give Thank us you. a shout out there yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just like it's it's so amazing that yeah. strangers care so much right yeah yeah was it like i know we mentioned this because you found this space and it was a bakery before but did the fact that it's in short hills did that factor into the decision at the beginning was there anything behind that, or was it just like this is the best space for what we're yeah. trying to do? Yeah, um, because we we worked in Milburn before, oh, okay. we knew right. a bit of the area. Yeah, and honestly, we this part this this part was pretty empty, but when like we got in here, okay. and slowly businesses have been opening back up, or yeah, and that. It's like to me, like we got in at a good time yeah. where people mm-hmm. are like now right the ride the wave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we think we think we made it a good decision. No, I, <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. Um, but uh, so talk to me about maybe like some ways that people, if like it, maybe an example of people like in the community. I know you mentioned the the Facebook groups and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, but kind of getting started and like being a new business and like. You said, like, this is kind of the wave. Is there, like, there must be a lot of excitement about new businesses opening up in this part. You know, you mentioned, you know, downtown yeah. Milburn, which is, you know, basically, like, right down the street. But here in Short Hills, like, in this part of Short Hills, you know, it seems like things are on their way up. So, mm-hmm. like, what's what's that kind of been like? Um, so, we mentioned to you before we started the podcast that there was um, this uh, special improvement district, um, Nonprofit, nonprofit organization, okay. organization yeah. called Explore Milburn, and um, Steve Grillo, which is uh, the president from the organization, he reached out to us when we were still in construction um, about you know promoting the business, mm-hmm. and um, they have a page where uh, local communities you know follow this page for updates on all local businesses and that was a tremendous uh start you know Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people from town you know got excited we were getting excited we were getting more following um so that Mm -hmm. definitely helped um in terms of you know getting the word out the word out Mm -hmm. out, right Mm -hmm. yeah um what else i don't i don't know (laughs) <laughs> like you said, it was just kind of yeah. like a whirlwind of a couple yeah. months. But because um, like we were talking about before, we were like we always do this segment of the mm-hmm. community side of it. And you've only been open for two months, you know, and yeah. sunk a lot of your all of your maybe savings into opening this place. So, like, you know, I think one of the things that's that's always cool is like, we, we talk a lot with the business owners about how they, um, you know, support the community mm-hmm. that they, you know, um, serve and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And obviously, you know, I know you guys do that kind of stuff as well. Um, but at the same time, I think it's even cooler when people like you're talking yeah. about all these businesses opening down here in Short Hills, you know, like people are excited about that and like they yeah. want to see all those businesses succeed. Right. So that they're going to go out and support them and, and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I, I honestly wasn't expecting so many people to really care <laughs> and to be like, oh, we hope you guys are here forever. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's right. like, wow, like, you know, people actually care what's in their town or, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's good. It's, it, it's it feel, good. it gives us a home. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't feel like we need to try to fit in. Like people yeah. are open and accepting to, you know, us and yeah. our business. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, that's what you, that's what you need. So, exactly. um, and then like, a, as you kind of progress through here too, like, you know, um, I forgot, I lost my train of thought, but cause I was looking over at the menu <laughs> and I was like, what? I don't know why I was looking over there, but, um, so then also like too, with the, um, from the community side of it, I think I have a really good question here. Um, you like, what do you think, like, do, do you think the success maybe at the very beginning would have been different if you weren't here? You know what I mean? Like if you were someplace mm-hmm. like, I don't even know, pick another place that maybe didn't have like this kind of vibe we right now. almost picked a location in scotch plains mm-hmm. and looking back at it now we we're like i don't think we would have felt as you know with our community mm-hmm. as you know yeah. we are now because the place there was um it was on route 22 so okay. it was just like so it was just yeah. busy 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 right. busy yeah. no walking people no, no walking, walking no foot traffic yeah. versus here you know people are walking yeah. all the time right 
And Angie always said she wanted some place where people could walk to. Oh, yeah. Because it's right. just better. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. live in Morristown, yeah. and I walk around town all the time. And, right. And, like, there's sometimes, like, I'll pass by, you know, a brewery, and I'll be like, I'm going to get a beer. And I'll, like, yeah. walk in and then walk home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's great, like, having something like that. Exactly. And having businesses like that just right around there, and if they have good stuff, even better. You know? mm-hmm. We have a couple of regulars that come in and they get their, you know, weekly fix of things from here. And I think yeah. that's really nice. Yeah. So. Love yeah. it. Awesome. Um, all right. So uh, before we get to our, you know, closing stuff and getting the links and the addresses, um, you know, so like, what are some, well, let's just do that. Like, what are some ways that people, like, let me, let me ask this. <laughs> if, if someone comes in here and they're like, they see the menu and they're not really sure what to get and whatever, like, do you have, like, a, I know we mentioned before, like, what people, like, the, the go-to thing, mm-hmm. but what's, like, a good, like, training wheels, like, what, what happens when they walk in the door? Like, is, is something, just to try it out. Like, what's one thing they should try to kind of get themselves started? Mm. I personally think a pastry, because at the end of the day, we're making this from scratch versus a juice, you know, you're getting yeah. local fruits and vegetables, great. Right. But, you know, what's what's I that would, in comparison yeah. to a pastry that we're a making? A lot of people, first, a lot of people always choose our cinnamon brown sugar pop tart oh. if it's their first time. For some reason, they're like, I'll take the pop tart. Just sounds so good. Yeah. And and I love pop tarts. It's yeah. funny because people have been going nuts for those. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I do kind of direct them towards pastries that people talk about during mm-hmm. their first visit here. Got mm-hmm. it. So that one is definitely a popular yeah. one. Yeah. Very popular. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll definitely be having it on the menu for right. a, a staple. Of time. A taste yeah. buddy a staple. staple. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. for sure. Um, all right. So where can people, like, what's the, let's do the address first. What's the address of this place if they want to come check it out? So it's 515A Milburn Ave, and that's in Short Hills in New Jersey. Got it. Right, all mm-hmm. New Jersey. Oh, and New then, Jersey. Um, so then if people want to go and, like, we mentioned the Instagram account before, what's the Instagram handle? Taste Buddy NJ? Taste, Taste Buddy NJ. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then are there, I mean, I'm sure there's other places, website, what um, other places would you try to send people to go learn more about Taste Buddy? Yeah, our website, yeah. TasteBuddyNJ.com. We have some fun on TikTok, Taste Buddy NJ. Nice. Um, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook. It's the same. Taste, Taste Buddy and Buddy and Jay. Jay. You can't, <laughs> Buddy and Jay you can't miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then with the website, I was on it when we first talked, and now I forget. Like, can they go on there and purchase stuff on the website, or is that more? That you no, to, you, can. you can. You can. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, it's just pickup only, but we will be getting into DoorDash right. very soon. Yeah, once um, they... And hopefully, hopefully soon we can really deliver all across the United States. Yeah, that would be, that would be, uh, be cool. one of yeah. our goals for next year is to try to start shipping at some yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. So, uh, so Taste Buddy NJ across the board. <laughs> we know we know where to go. Um, TasteBuddy.com. Uh, Taste Buddy. I just said it wrong. TasteBuddyNJ.com uh, is the website. Um, and so, Angie, Alexa, thank you so much for uh, doing this with us today thank and you learning so much. more about the business. This was fantastic. Um, I'll make sure that I put the social handles, the website, the actual address in the show notes so that if people do want to come check you guys out, they can go there. I'll also put greetingsfromthegardenstate.com uh, and greetingsfromthegardenstate at gmail.com, the website and the email address of the show. If you want to reach out to us, that would be great. Um, guys, thank you again. Thank, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. And everybody else, thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time.